two are very unique unusual in the circumstance back to school night for our AP US history. I'm Mr. Van Weigarden and we're always going to remember this year for sure. But it's been surprisingly really um, kind of fun so far. The your your kids have been great. So Let's get going here and let's learn a little bit more about our class AP US history. So go to the presentation mode here. Bear with me for one second. All right. So I'm Mr. Van Weingarten. Students know me as Mr. V. It's a lot easier for me. It's a lot easier for them. A little bit about me. Um, born and raised in San Luis Obispo, where my dad was a professor at Cal Poly for over 35 years and then after high school I went to San Diego State University and I earned my postgraduate teaching credentials there as well and now I've been here at Half Moon Bay High School for the last seven years and it's been a terrific experience I really like working with my fellow colleagues um, in the department and across the school and our administration is great but I know it sounds cliche Probably the best part is just working with the students here. I really, really feel special to be working here and living here in this community. All right, so let's take a look at our course. The AP US History course is designed to provide students with the analytical skills and factual knowledge necessary to deal critically with the problems of materials in US history. Prepare students for intermediate and advanced college courses by making demands upon them equivalent to those made by full year introductory college courses, which is why it's not only just an impressive thing to have on your transcripts, it's also a way to get college credit if you pass the AP exam. So there are seven central themes that we check out this year American and national identity, politics and power, work exchange and technology, culture and society, migration, settlement geography and environment, America in the new world. And the reason why we look at these themes is because they kind of are interwoven from one unit to another, one chapter to another, and they are the basis and foundation for many of the written response questions in the AP exam. As far as history is from a more chronological perspective, these are our nine periods that we look at in AP US history. So I'm not going to read them verbatim, but they are right there. We have already finished with period one that was essentially covered by our summer assignment and follow-up test. And right now we are currently looking at period two, soon to wrap that up, and then we're gonna jump into period number three. It sounds like we're moving really fast, but one of the unique challenges of this class is the overall scale of the curriculum. There are 41, I'll say it again, 41 chapters in our AP US history textbook, The American Pageant. And in a normal year, those 41 chapters are an extreme challenge to get through before the AP exam. It's still enough for review. And now we're in a situation with remote learning where we only see the students directly in our classes twice a week as opposed to three times a week and then on our block schedule traditionally at on-site learning we are with the students for a longer period of time too so it will be a little bit faster pace and accelerated even within a class lesson so it is very important the students really get involved with their asynchronous work also and that they are preparing for chapter quizzes and unit tests by reading the book as well. All right, so there's two platforms that we're using here. One is Google Classroom, one is School Loop. School Loop is really the best for you to keep monitoring your son or daughter's progress. And I routinely update that with scores. I stay on top of my grading. Um, please just keep checking in on that as much as possible. Google Classroom is where we are having all of our documents, whether that be Google Words, Word Docs, PowerPoints, Google Slides, video links, PDFs of the textbook chapters. I am including all of those things into the lessons. And if you take a look inside that, I've invited many of you to be part of my Google Classroom. You'll see that it's pretty organized and I have things in there weeks ahead so students can have an idea of what their calendar will look like and what they should be prepared for and they can manage not only 
for this class, but there are other classes as far as what they need to get done for school. So if you'd like to be part of the Google Classroom and have not been invited by me yet, please email me. Address at the end of this PowerPoint. All right, so let's check this out. AP exam, not a mandated thing for your son or daughter to do, but a super cool thing for your son or daughter to do, especially if they're putting in the time, the work, the effort, and they're getting a B or higher. Why not get the college credit? That is a fantastic thing. Our deadline for registry for the AP exam is coming up pretty soon, believe it or not, October 2nd. Vice Principal Tower will be sending us an email with more information about that, but I decided to kind of jump the gun on this and let you know about how you can get that done. All students, whether they're taking the AP exam or not, are required in this class, other classes in America, to register in my AP classroom website. I've given the link there. I've already assigned it for students in their Google Classroom. They're getting 20 points assignment on that right now. And then once they have done that and created their account and log in, more information there, want to access that, they can then have the option of taking the AP exam right there. And that will take you through how they can do that and how you can register them for that. All right, our exam date is going to be Thursday, May 6th. Once again, I'll repeat the registration date is October the 2nd. All right, hopefully by May 6th, we're living in a post COVID world vaccinated, who knows, maybe we're actually back in the classroom and that would be a lot of fun to review with them in person. All right, there's two parts to that test, 60 minute multiple choice section, 60 minute free response section. This is a big reason why I'm continuing the tests and exams, even during remote learning, so that we'll be able to be better prepared for that. All right, AP exam test prep. Again, 41 chapters, typical year, very difficult to get through those 41 chapters. Now it's even more challenging. So to have a realistic shot of passing that AP exam, if your son or daughter is going to take the AP exam, please get one of these fantastic books. One is the Kaplan Review book, the other is Prince Review. There are other book companies that do this. Barron's is a pretty good one as well. But I would recommend these two, and they do a nice job of concisely breaking down each unit and chapter, but more importantly, they have fantastic test taking strategies and lots of practice quizzes. All right, if you're wondering, will college or university that my son or daughter is applying to accept a three out of five passing score? Um, you know, definitely fours and fives always, but three may be a question mark to you. I have Included this link right here. It will link up the scores to different institutions across California and the United States. So you can always reference this later on this year if you'd like. Put that in there for your convenience. Grades, traditional grade scale. Don't really need to go over that. But what is interesting to notice is the grades are weighted, and I've done it by three categories. I've simplified it this year. I've consolidated homework and classroom work together because of our unique remote learning situation. I felt that it was appropriate to do that. It's 35% tests and quizzes are 50%. Closed core elements are 15%. If you're wondering what core elements are, the students have been doing these at CUNIA and maybe with a few other teachers here, um, but I love them. They're fantastic. The notes are basically the body of the documents right here. These can be edited in Microsoft Word or students can print them out ahead of time. Write a big idea there, and they just copy from my presentation. And then they write study vocab questions on the left. These will help prepare students for individual chapter quizzes and unit exams. Late work, late work will only be accepted due to an excused absence. You'll have an equal number of days of complete missing assignments, tests, or quizzes as you were absent. So if you missed a session of class and it's excused, you have an extra day or two, depending on how the calendar works, to turn in the work. Yep. All right, if it's not part of a merited excused absence and it's just turned in late period, students can earn up to 50% earned credit. Classroom rules, whether we're on campus or we're in a Zoom session, basically the three rules, just be ready, be responsible, be respectful, and I am super impressed with the maturity level and just how positive and respectful the students have been with one another and with me so far. So basically, a lot of these are common sense, dress appropriate to our school dress code, show respect to classmates and teachers, be positive, always be prepared to respond and participate. You know, you may not know the answer, and that's fine. That's fine. But as long as you know what the question is and 
you're trying and you're participating with group breakout sessions if we do those and you have things to share with other people that is absolutely fantastic okay extra credit from time to time in entire class is offered extra credit um yes of course it is a way to boost grade percentage so students do get excited when it is posted again posted for everybody i do not honor individual requests for extra credit tailored just for that student to avoid the regular work they have to do all right school vote again cannot implore this enough keep track uh their progress on their assignments by checking with school loop frequently. I update it frequently throughout the week. Um, and get in touch with me. You can direct email me right here about anything tonight on this presentation or just if you have any academic concerns as well. So there's the address. Um, do be aware, so you'd be amazed how many people forget this. Put the first letter initial, the first name after the last name on our teacher addresses and then at the district site. All right, well, thank you for checking this out. I'm hoping this is a great year. I know it'll be a memorable year for sure. I know it'll be a challenging year. But I'm hoping it's also going to be a very educational, fun, and cool year. I do obviously hope things get better. I hope it's safe way. We can be in person again under optimum post COVID conditions this school year. So, again, thank you. Have a great evening, and that will wrap up our.